<laughs> hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. Let's talk numbers. More specifically, let's talk about the number 15 through the number one best-selling unisex fragrances in the entire country for last year. Now this is part two, and part one I went over number 30 through number 16. So if you haven't seen that video, check that one out first. That way you know everything that's already been talked about. And like in that video, it's gonna be the same in this one. I'm gonna be giving you the ranking for each one of these fragrances. I'm gonna be giving you the number for how much they sold, the value of what they sold, and whether it was an increase or decrease year over year. That way you know if the fragrance is getting more popular or less popular. The same caveats that applied in the first video in part one apply in this one as well. These are the sales numbers for the United States from quarter one through the end of quarter three for last year. I'm shooting this video in mid-January, so the uh, quarter four numbers are not available yet. Uh, if they become available and it causes things to shift and change, I'll do an updated video. But for right now, this is where everything stood at the end of quarter three. So this will let you know what was selling and how much it was selling. It'll let you get an idea, a glimpse into what's really popular right now in the US. Now these are unisex fragrances, but in essence, this is kind of a niche list because most niche fragrances are considered unisex. Now, of course, there are niche scents that are considered masculine or feminine, uh, but a lot of the times niche brands in particular kind of market their stuff as unisex or genderless however you want to put it, but they're made for whoever wants to wear them, right? So in a way, this gives you a good idea of what's selling in the niche world, because in actuality, pretty much all the fragrances in this list would be considered niche, at least by most people. And uh, my two new ones at Water and West Loop, those are in every fragrance outlet and Perfumania store in the country. So if you have one of those nearby, stop in, check them out. You can also find them in the description below at Michael Malul's website. You can use the code GENTSENSE to save some money there. Now, all of these are gonna be linked in the description below. Feel free to check all of the fragrances out down there. Let's get it kicked off with number 15. It's from Maison Francis Kirkshawn and it is Gentle Fluidity Gold. And just like in part one, I'm gonna try to move through these pretty quickly, so I'm not gonna be pulling out a whole bunch of bottles here. I'll just uh, use images. Ooh, images. <laughs> this one is at $4.73 million, which is a step up from last year. So a big improvement for that one, actually uh, over 20% year over year in terms of the increase. So this one's a vanilla ambery fragrance, leans feminine, came out the same time as Gentle Fluidity Silver. And between the two, gold is the one uh, that sells the best. And this is not the last MFK you'll see. And there were some MFK fragrances on uh, part one as well. So in general, Maison Francis Kirkshawn does very well in the uh, unisex fragrance market. And the overall amount that this increased year over year was a tad bit over 27%. Uh, so yeah, really, really good showing by that one. Number 14 is Love Don't Be Shy from By Killian, which sold more than Angel Share, believe it or not, because Angel Share was of course in part one. This one was a little bit over 4.8 million for the overall sales, which was an increase year over year. Not as big as the increase for Gentle Fluidity Gold, but an increase nonetheless. And even though this fragrance is considered unisex, uh, in actuality, this is much more of a feminine leaning fragrance like the one that we talked about before. And it's another one that is quite sweet. Number 13 and number 12 are both super ultra close in terms of the overall value uh, of the product sold. And when I say super ultra close, I mean within a couple hundred dollars of each other. So basically the same. But technically, number 13 is Lime Basil Mandarin from Joe Malone. And Joe Malone is one of those brands that just is synonymous with unisex fragrances, niche fragrances. Uh, you know, it's, it's a huge brand that everybody knows about. 5.53 million was the number for this one, which actually was a decrease year over year of uh, about 7%. So this one dropped down a little bit, but still performed well enough that it was just outside the top 10. And then the next fragrance, the one that was within about 250 bucks of this one, is also from Jo Malone. Nectarine Blossom and Honey is the, the next up in the list. So yeah, Jo Malone, just two right after the other that are essentially performing exactly the same, but this one did 
drop year over year as well. Only this one dropped more. <laughs> this one dropped uh, about 17%. Uh, so yeah, this one uh, coming down a little bit, but at number 12, so still performing very well. And uh, the overall amount when you round it, the exact same in terms of value as uh, the fragrance that came for it. Number 11 is from Tom Ford, just barely outside the top 10, and it is Lost Cherry. 6.63 million for Lost Cherry, which was actually an increase year over year. So this one is not just holding on to its popularity, it's actually increasing a little bit year over year. The increase year over year for this one was right at about 5%, technically just barely, barely above 5%, but still year over year, a nice showing for that one, just barely outside of the top 10. And Tom Ford just in general, absolutely annihilates the unisex fragrances list. When you look down through there, it's just like Tom Ford, Tom Ford, Tom Ford, Tom Ford, and there is another one. Number 10, so we are officially into the top 10, is from Tom Ford. <laughs> Again, Tom Ford, yep. So Le Blanc is number 10, just barely eking out the win over Lost Cherry at $6.65 million, and that one also increased year over year. So Le Blanc increased year over year at about 8.5%, so, uh, widening the gap a little bit between that and Lost Cherry because of that uh, increased percentage compared to Lost Cherry, uh, but still both of those doing really well at 11 and 10. Number nine it comes to us from a different brand. Yeah, it's, it's not Joe Malone, it's not Tom Ford, and it's not Maison Francis Kirkshawn either. Go figure, it's, it's crazy, I can't believe it. Uh, it's Le Labo, so you, you may know immediately what it is when I say that and just think, what is the most popular fragrance by Le Labo? Ah, yeah, Santal 33. 7.03 million for that one, and uh, that one's been out for a minute. You know, Santal 33 has been around for a while. Uh, a lot of people call that the scent of New York. They say, you know, it's, it's everywhere in New York City. You go there, everybody's wearing Santal 33. So with how long it's been out, you would think maybe mm, dropping a little bit? No, actually an increase year over year of close to 30%. What happened last year? So all of a sudden everybody was like, ah, get back on the Santal 33 bandwagon, let's go. I don't know, uh, but it still had a, a huge increase there. And uh, for what it's worth, it is a big time niche fragrance. Uh, Santal 33 is one of the big dogs. It's one of the ones that has inspired a lot of other scents out there. It's, uh, you know, it's a little bit divisive. Some people, can't really jive with it. They get a pickly kind of smell. Other people love it and swear by it, but still doing really, really well. Number eight is from a fragrance house that you will never guess. I'm gonna let you think about it. Drum roll, it is Tom Ford. It's, it's Tom Ford again, yeah. Black Orchid this time, Black Orchid. This one came in at 7.14 million in terms of value. And you have to think that uh, in terms of volume, it was probably top five because Per bottle, Black Orchid is cheaper, which is relative, but is cheaper than most everything else that we've talked about. Still not cheap, but not as expensive per bottle than most of these, or really all of them. So if it's up there in value, but then it has a lower cost per bottle, then it has to be way up there in volume. That's what I'm trying to get across. It's hard to explain sometimes. And this one actually dropped year over year by about eight and a half percent but still good enough to be in the top 10, uh, which is really intriguing because that's a, a pretty steep drop, but it still is there. So that shows you how much this has crushed it year over year over year over year. Number seven is Joe Malone. It's Peony Blush Suede. Joe Malone and Tom Ford just trading blows at this point. 7.21 million is the number for this one, and it also dropped year over year. And this is uh, another fragrance that is gonna lean more on the feminine side of things. A lot of these unisex fragrances do have a bit of a, a feminine lean. Now there are a bunch of them that are just straight up unisex. Uh, they don't really lean one way or the other. And then you have some that maybe have a slight masculine lean, uh, but I'm sure that's one thing you've noticed if you've seen this uh, part one through here now, that a lot of these do lean more toward being floral or very sugary sweet kind of feminine type of scents, even though they are officially marketed as unisex. So that one had a drop year over year of a little over six and a half percent. So not quite as big as Black Orchid, but still a little drop there as well. Number six is a fragrance that you will immediately recognize. All of you should know this fragrance. It's from the house of Tom Ford, 
Tom Ford, and it's Oud Wood. Oud Wood is created, perfumed by Richard Urpan. He's a good friend of mine. He's come on the channel before, and we're going to be doing a lot of uh, videos together as time goes on. We've got a bunch of them planned where he reviews fragrances, and we're going to do lists together. He's going to do raw materials and kind of explain those for you guys. Just a lot of stuff. But he also, on top of all that, made my fragrance, Edgewater. So, uh, yeah. Shout out Richard. Before we go any further, here are some codes that you can use. The newest code is GS11 for fragflex.com. That will get you 11% off a flat, 11% off your order. And there's also the code Ashton40 for preciousliquid.com, which is Richard Urpont's uh, personal brand. So if you shop there, use that code. Oudwood is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's a great signature scent. It's classy, it's sexy, it's versatile, very usable. It's one of the easiest high quality oud fragrances to kind of work into oud because it's not scary, right? Which is also why it still sells so well. But year over year, it actually did dip down a pretty good amount, about 15%. So that's unacceptable. We need to bump that number up into the top five. Not, not us, I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of money to spend to bump that up. But hey, number six, pretty sweet. Number five, we're in the top five, wow. It's crazy, I can't believe it. Number five is from Tom Ford. And what fragrance is it? Coming in at number five, any guesses? Well, it is Demonetized Fabulous. That's a, that's a good one. Effin' Fabulous, you, you know, you know. 7.4 million on that one, but pretty close to 20% dip year over year. So uh, still at number five, which shows how well it did in 22, 2022, but uh, yeah, that one had a pretty steep drop off year over year. Technically, it was just under 19%, uh, the, the difference year over year. But that one definitely got people's attention with the name when it came out. And uh, Tom Ford has leaned on that a little bit with some of the fragrances that have come out here over the past few years. And like they have the new one coming out, Vanilla Sex. So it's just, you know, trying to get a little attention any way you can. Number four, Jo Malone, English Pear and Freesia. Like I said, Jo Malone. Tom Ford, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 10.74 million for this, a little over 9% increase year over year. We have crested into the 10 million pluses. And I will tell you on the masculine side, there was one niche fragrance in the top 30 bestsellers that was Aventus. That would be number two in the unisex list. So it would outsell, or it did outsell rather, everything in the unisex list except number one. And, and on the ladies side, Delina, from Parfums to Marley was in the top 30 feminine bestsellers. And that would have been uh, number three if you had Aventus in there. If you did not have Aventus in there, it would be number two. So it also outsold all of these fragrances except the number one. All right, number three, Jo Malone, once again, Wood Sage in Sea Salt. 11.43 million for that one, a little over 9% increase year over year. So. Number three and four, both Joe Malone, and both number three and four increased a little over 9% year over year. So now you know the, the best-selling Joe Malone fragrances, which there's a lot of them. They're doing pretty well. And when I saw the list, it made sense to me with some of those when I saw them in there, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I hear about that one all the time. Of course, everybody hears about that one all the time. So it makes sense that it would be doing really well. Number two is from Tom Ford, and it is Ombre Leather, yeah. Yeah, ombre leather, number two. 12.65 million for that one. So really substantial sales for Tom Ford across the board, like I said, in this uh, unisex list and ombre leather. Kind of a surprise to see it up there. Another thing I'll say here, ombre leather, like Black Orchid, is not quite as expensive as most of the stuff that we've talked about. So that means by volume, it's moving a bunch of units compared to some of these fragrances that are fairly close in terms of value. Because if ombre leather is going for, let's say 150, right? And then another fragrance in this list is going for 300. That means you have to sell two bottles of ombre leather to equal one bottle of this. So the volume on the ombre leather is gonna be way higher. And that was super close to just being flat year over year, a 1% or so increase. So ombre leather holding steady at number two. Now we're at number one. And uh, just to show you how far the gulf is between number one and number two. The number two fragrance was at 12.65 million. So 12.65 million, that's for number two. What do you think number one is at? 
1.27, just a massive gulf between two and one. Between number two and number 30, there was about a $10 million difference in sales between number two and number 30. Between number one and number two, it's closer to $55 million in difference. So yeah, that's, that's pretty big. And number one actually increased by about 5% year over year. It is of course, Baccarat Rouge 540. So BR540, the number one unisex fragrance. Uh, honestly, at this point, it is the number one selling niche fragrance in the US and it ain't close. The number two niche fragrance in America is Aventus. And that was at about 26.8 million. You take Aventus, you double it, and it still is not the amount that BR540 sold in the first three quarters of the year in just the US here. So Baccarat Rouge 540, number one, and uh, it's, it's really just stunting on everybody at this point. Put another way, Baccarat Rouge 540 in the US outsells every single masculine designer fragrance in terms of value other than Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel. Everything else it outsells, again, in terms of value. So there we go, guys. That is the top 15 best-selling unisex fragrances in the US for last year. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Leave in the comments below if any of these surprised you. If they didn't, uh, stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.